My name is Hans Gudegast. My screen name is Eric Braden. And, um, yeah. To be honest with you, I don't remember when I first met Stefanos. Um, I think it was through my son, Christian Gudegast, uh, friendship with Stefanos. Um, but I don't remember exactly when. I just know he was this, you know, tough guy with a fantastic face. And uh, being in the business that I'm in, I thought, whoa, that guy should be in films. And years later, I had a chance to cast him in a film I did with George Kennedy and uh, Armand Asante and Billy Zane called A Man Who Came Back. And Stephanos was on that film. And what a... <sighs> Stephanos is someone who uh, makes an enormous impression on one upon first meeting him. He's just a genuinely tough guy in a town where there are a lot of wannabes, you know. And uh, very soft-spoken, um, exuding enormous strength. And then when one began to talk to him, uh, you realize that he was more than just a tough guy. He was intellectually very curious and that made him the interesting human being that he turned out to be. Um, deeply steeped in Greek literature and philosophy and uh, Greek history and uh, then curiously also uh, read a lot of French literature. And um, anyway, I don't remember how I met Stephanos. I, I, uh, probably in some, in some gym, uh, I think through my son. Well, uh, Stephanos did come from Greece, I think at the age of 12. I came from Germany at the age of 18. Uh, Stephanos never lost his accent, he, he never did. Uh, some people have more of a uh, feeling for that than others. Uh, he didn't, that was not his strong point. Um, what it imbued him with, I think, uh, is a sense of perspective. He had a different perspective of what we all like about America, those of us who come here as immigrants. We deeply appreciate the basic values of this country. We appreciate the fact that it's based on law, on the Constitution, not on anything else, but on law. And Stephanos was acutely aware of that. Uh, he also had a sense of individuality, of, of a sense of doing it on your own, making it on your own. His father, I think, was um, some craftsman, I think a tailor, if I'm not mistaken, and um, worked very hard. And when you come to another country, you don't even know the emotional turmoil that one goes through. It takes years to adjust to, I mean, come, I cannot imagine what it was like to come from Greece into America all of a sudden. It's, it's a totally different world. And Stephanos, you, I always felt that he, he fought himself through that. I don't think he ever really fully reconciled to being in another country. He always had, we always do, those of us who immigrate to, uh, to America, we always have one foot still in that country we left. And then when we go back, we realize how lucky we are to be in America. And I think he realized that over and over again. And you have a tendency to romanticize where you come from. And uh, as I said, when you go back, you uh, become disabused of that romantic notion of where you came from. And I'm sure that the Greece he left um, was tough. And uh, the village he left, I came from a village in Germany. And when you go back, you say, oh my God, what am I dreaming about? You know, but yet you do. So 
it, it's, it's a conflict within you, but it also gives you a wider perspective of life in America. And it gives you a deep appreciation of what this country fundamentally is about, namely that freedom that most immigrants came to enjoy. They escaped one form or another of, of uh, kind of stultified, stratified, very structured kind of society with a very strong hierarchy. America is just this dizzying, you know, um, country of, of all kinds of possibilities. And uh, it, it can cause insecurity because you don't quite know how to deal with it. But Stefano certainly did. And um, so did I. Um, but we had, I think immigrants share a certain bond. We, we, there's a, you share a certain basic understanding of the perspective that you have gained by coming from an entirely different culture. So, um, but he came at the age of 12, which is really curious and interesting because usually they say if you come before 16, you lose your accent. And he never did. I think there was a kind of a defiance in him to not want to lose it completely because he, he held on to, you know, that, those Greek roots and Macedonia, Thessalo Thessaloniki. Macedonia is obviously the birthplace of Alexander the Great, arguably one of the greatest statesmen and, and, and uh, warriors ever in the history of mankind. And I think he, Stephanos, he lived all that, he embodied all that. He, um, he looked at things, you know, the old Socrates and, and Aristotle and Plato afterwards, uh, they would walk a lot. And while walking, they philosophized. And they also wrestled, and they also fought. And the Olympics, the original Olympics, were also included poetry and music. And, and, and so Stephanos had a keen sense of the Latin saying, in corpore sano, uh, in, in men sano, corpor in corpore sano, men sano. Uh, men sano and corpore sano. That means a healthy mind lives in a healthy body. And he, embodied that and he practiced that and I agree with it completely. I think most psychiatrists couches would be empty if people heeded that advice. A healthy mind lives in a healthy body and um, he lived that. So he was a complex character, a character thinking about deep philosophic thoughts and that is what made him obviously multidimensional. Uh, and yet he was as tough as nails. Uh, arguably one of the toughest guys I've ever met, and I've met a few. And um, he had a grip that was so strong. <laughs> it was just, you know, my son um, wrestled with him and, 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 and rolled with him. Uh, my son, Christian, um, uh, who was a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And, and, and I remember he and Stephanos wrestling outside of our garage here. They put up mats and all that. And, and he said Stephanos was just, Stephanos only knew one gear. Fast forward, boom. He didn't hold back, he didn't. I boxed with him a few times. And we boxed, uh, he was not mm, very good boxer, but he was tough as nails. And so, I just never forget the, I have a deep respect for wrestlers. I think it is obviously also the very foundation of jiu-jitsu, um, more than boxing. Um, so there was a very solid foundation to Stefanos. You always felt there was a solidity about him, a, a fundamental strength. And I think wrestlers have that more than almost anyone else. Um, yeah. Um, well, I think I'd been there the night before, and it was at, um, at the Buffalo Club. And he was a bouncer at the Buffalo Club, you know, 
<laughs> I'm sure that many a person who tried to mouth off at the place will remember Stephanos. And uh, he was just such he was such a gentleman at the same time. But man, you fucked with him. So I just hear the story from from Christian, my son, who was there when it happened. At the Buffer Club, they had a dance floor. And after a certain hour, they would start dancing. And apparently some guy who thought he was tough was mouthing off at guests. So they called Stephanos in and he came in and um, quietly went up to the guy and said, you know, just calm down, okay? Or else you gotta leave. So the guy continued mouthing off at Stephanos, not realizing what he was getting into. So, <laughs> so apparently he mouthed off at him again, and Stephanos just, you know, put him under the table and grabbed him by the back of the neck or whatever and said, you're walking out quietly now. And they walked from the dance floor by the kitchen. And there's a narrow space at the Buffalo Club that opens up into the bar. And the guy made the egregious mistake of throwing an elbow at Stefano's head. Well, that's the last thing he saw, that guy. So Stefano picked him up and turned him around and boom, was pile driving him into the ground. And Christian told me that he was, Stefano's was petrified that he might have killed him. So uh, they pulled him into the kitchen and Paramedics came, the cops came, and they knew Stephanos, and they knew that Stephanos would never have started a fight. So uh, that guy then was carried off uh, by ambulance. And um, that is the story I most remember about him. And he has been here at my house many times uh, for Thanksgiving dinners with Higgin Machado and, and, and uh, Federico and, and um, various fighters, and uh, Stefano was always extremely gracious. I remember my wife saying when she was cooking in the kitchen or whatever, he would always come by and thank her, and, and he was a very gracious man at the same time. He was a gentleman at the same time. And a lot of people just were confused by this enormous power, and yet he was a gentleman, and he talked about Socrates and Aristotle, and Plato, and uh, French literature, and Balzac, I think, and Emile Zola, and, and so he was just an extraordinary character, uh, a Renaissance man, if you will. Um, yeah, you, if you met Stephanos, you would not forget him that easily. You would not. He was just an unusual character, and as far as I'm concerned, um, had he devoted more time to acting um, with that face. Bah. It's like, it's like, it's like um, um, Hicks and Gracie, also the extraordinary face. And if they had devoted themselves more to acting, they could have become big stars. I'm convinced of that. But um, it's such a tough business, you know. Uh, a lot of people waste enormous amount of time in our business trying to become actors. Some people have had enormous educations in acting specifically and still try to make it after years and years and years. It's a tough business. You have to be a little nuts to go into it, which I can attest to. Yes, I think he could have been uh, an action star. Uh, my goodness. Absolutely. Uh, but I think he, he, at the same time, didn't really take it that seriously, you know? It's, it's, um, Stephanus was, um, I think if he had had his brothers and had had the ability, he would have been a writer. He should have been a writer. I think his, one of his heroes was Kazantzakis. And um, um, it, it's, it's, acting is not enough for someone like that. 
he had a, had a broad perspective and he just, you know, it's, it's kind of sad and tragic in a sense. Um, in the wrong time, I think, wrong place, I think. And uh, what you felt with Stephanos is that he could have been all kinds of things. And, but I think writing would have fit him the most. That's my opinion. And you think of Hemingway, you think of, of Kazantzakis, you think of Dostoevsky, you think of people who, you know, you could feel the conflicts in his head, you could feel the enormous forces in his head. Um, yeah. And then, of course, he was stubborn, very stubborn. And I think one of the enormous tragedies in, in Stefano's life, as far as I'm concerned, uh, was his insistence on opening that gym on Market Street. I remember the very beginning of it, and I remember when it was finished. I said, Stephanos, what the hell do you need these, you know, fancy showers for? Well, no, I have to... So he could not be told anything, nothing. You couldn't tell him a damn thing. And, um, you yeah, know, it's, it's, it's... But that's who he was. And then he opened this this uh, cafe on, 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 on the boardwalk. Well, it should have been a hamburger joint or a hot dog joint, but not a European cafe. So you see, it's this, this conflict in him, you know? And he wanted to, he defied. Uh, on the one hand, he embraced America, embraced the free enterprise system, embraced all of that. And on the other hand, he still harkened back to Europe, to cafes and sitting and talking and, he, well, he smoked. And I often told him, I said, Stefano, stop that shit. Stop smoking. Anyway, that's a different story. And, um, yeah. So, as with a lot of people, stubbornness is based on strength and conviction. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. You know, I just felt that he, he sort of had certain romantic ideas about um, that's how he lived his life. He lived his life without compromise. He did what he wanted to do. And uh, I just wish, to be honest with you, that he had had more success um, with his gym, for example. And I don't want to get into all those machinations that pertained to that gym experience um, involved involved another person and I didn't know enough about it to talk about it but it always broke my heart I think it broke his heart um, the fact that that gym did not take off uh, the way he had envisioned it to take off broke his heart I think and uh, he was too trusting you know that's another thing with someone like Stephanos He's just, he looks you in the eye, he shakes your hand, he trusts you. And uh, some people can't be trusted. So, he's a tragic figure. Stephanos is truly a tragic figure, you know? Yeah. Well, he comes from a country that invented tragedies. You know, Sophocles and Aeschylus and my God Almighty, Homer, you know, it's, it's kind of sad that he was taken out of that. He is, he's so Greek. Yeah. Anyway, that is the fate of a lot of us who leave our country and come to America and we embrace a lot of it. And um, but that's what makes this country strong, is the immigrants. Unlike the idiot who talks badly about immigrants, they is what make this country strong. Look at all the Latin people who came across the border, who have worked here. Have you ever seen anyone who works harder than Latins? They work their asses off. All of us who live in these areas have had them work in our houses either building or cleaning or whatever it is. They never complain, they work hard. And I think uh, Stephanos appreciated that about them as well. Um, 
Anyway, that's a whole different subject matter. He and I disagreed politically about a few things. I think he romanticized, uh, he hated anything coming from the government. And um, my conviction is that the most functioning societies are those who mix free enterprise with regulation. And without regulation, you have chaos. It's, it's nonsense. It's just, it's a pipe dream. And if you think that big business regulates itself, you have shit creek. It doesn't. Big business is about here. That's it. So, but we need free enterprise. We need big business, but regulated. He and I would have a few arguments about that, but that's okay. How would I describe Stephanos in a sentence? That's practically impossible. Um, Stephanos was an intellectually very curious man who possessed enormous physical strength. Complicated. If I were to describe Stephanos in one word, I would have to say tragic. When I first, uh, Christian, my son Christian called me and said that Stephanos uh, was taken to the hospital the first time that he had a stroke, I think, and an aneurysm, and a heart attack, all of it at once. And um, that is so shocking to one system because you do not connect Stephanos with any weakness, uh, certainly not with a heart attack or an aneurysm. I mean, I think it shocked a lot of people and it, it shook their foundations. It really did. It, 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 you sort of, you're agape. You, you just don't know what to say. One doesn't know how to put one's head around it. Um, we went to UCLA, Chris and I, uh, where he was uh, after the 17 hour surgery, I think. Um, it, it just, the juxtaposition of who one knew he was, and suddenly seeing him lie in that bed, whoa, you know, it makes you... Life is full of mysteries, I tell you. That's obviously one of the greatest mysteries, I think, I have ever witnessed about someone who is physically so strong and so tough. It's, it doesn't make any sense. It's incongruous. And... Um, then we visited him when he was in that rehab place somewhere near the city, somewhere way down there somewhere. And um, he was already walking with us and talking philosophy with us. And uh, obviously he was recuperating very fast. And, um, but it just, it shook you to your foundation to see Stephanos like that, you know. And, <clears throat> Again, reminding you to never take anything for granted, nothing for granted. <clears throat> so, then he seemed to have recuperated completely. I mean, stunning. I don't think he gave up smoking yet. I'm not totally sure, but I, I don't know. And um, so happy to see him bounce back. I think we had a dinner here after that again, and he seemed to be unchanged, same as he had been before. And then to suddenly hear that he had passed, well, you know, well, I, I, I still find it very hard to conceive of that, to be honest with you, and I think every, anyone who knew him finds it difficult. And then you begin to realize, at least from what I heard, sort of um, bits and pieces that apparently his father had 
and died of a similar kind of uh, um, uh, coronary problems, I don't know. Uh, it just didn't make any sense. It, it just still does not make any sense to me. Um, yeah. Every time I drive through Santa Monica, Venice, you know, you, you think of Stephanos. I mean, you just, you just, his spirit is around there somewhere. And uh, the image that I have of him is, I have a picture in the other room where we took a cast photo of the film I did, The Man Who Came Back. And he had a big duster on and a cowboy hat. And he was, uh, that's the image I have of Stephanos. And uh, then another image that I have. And then is when I used to box with him in his new gym and then on Market Street. And he would keep on saying, come on, come on, come on, come on, boom, come on. And he would just not give up. Well, I'm an athlete, so shit, I didn't give up. So we got into it, you know. And um, he didn't give up, but I don't give up either. So, but he's obviously had he taken me and wrestled with me, forget it. I said, don't you start that shit with me. No wrestling. So, anyway, it's, it's, um, uh, it's a gentleman, a warrior, um, a philosopher. Um, he was... Um, he was a complete man. It's just, just, you know. They don't make him like that that much anymore. You, you know, nowadays it's all PC. Well, Stephanos didn't give a shit about PC, nor do I. So, um, but he was very respectful of other people, very respectful, and um, complicated and tragic figure. What would I say to him if I had a last conversation with him? Hmm. You know, he reminds me of a poem by Dylan Thomas. Do not go gentle into this good night. Rage, rage, rage against the dying of the light. That was Stephanos. My last conversation with him, I don't know what that would have been about. I would have said to him, my friend, don't open that cafe on the boardwalk. Open a hot dog joint or a hamburger joint. I think that's what I would have said to him. Yeah, well, I still see him walk through the door on Thanksgiving uh, late afternoons when my wife, we would have about 20 guests here, whatever, and uh, all the warriors walked in. Stephanos and Higgin Machado and um, other people. And uh, it was always a joy to see him. He was always had a smile on his face and, and uh, always went to my wife in the kitchen and said hello and, and always very uh, sweet with the children with uh, Tatiana, uh, Tati and um, yeah huh. Life is but a walking shadow a poor player, in this case a strong player that struts and frets as are upon the stage and then is heard no more it is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. And that is Shakespeare, and that is Macbeth, at one of the most pessimistic moments. And I'm not that pessimistic. I just... My God, you, you, you begin to ask those fundamental questions that I asked when my father died, you know, when I was 12. And you ask questions about life and the meaning thereof. And um, there are no answers. 
They really aren't. All I can say about Stefano is that he lived a full life. I mean, he, you know, liked women and women liked him and um, he lived a full life. So, in that sense, I have good memories of him. He embraced life.